the Tribune News Network. This is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. A cabinet minister yesterday urged the cruise lines not to dump on the destination, given that they often created insurmountable thresholds for Bahamian businessmen to do business with them. Minister of Tourism and Aviation Dionisio de Aguilar said he wanted to give a little bit of a pushback to criticisms by Carnival Cruise Lines executives that NASA lacked fresh product, particularly new and exciting attractions and tours to entice passengers off ships when the industry returns after COVID-19. Calling for a more equal partnership between the Bahamas and the cruise industry, Mr. De Aguilar said the latter's practice of adding its own markup to the fee levied by Bahamian providers was effectively pricing local tours and excursions out of the market. Arguing cruise lines also need to adjust their own practices, he added that their markups often gave passengers the impression there was no value for money in leaving the ship. After weeks of being prey to online political mischief, the Progressive Liberal Party is fighting back and its leader, Philip Rave Davis, has written to Facebook's headquarters to have it stopped. Mr. Davis is petitioning the powerful and popular social media platform to change the internal policies that currently allow fake organizations to use the platform to spread their messages. He said the accounts are trying to subvert the Bahamas' democracy. In a letter addressed to Jennifer Newstead, Facebook's vice president and general counsel, and Henry Moniz, Facebook's chief compliance compliance officer, Mr. Davis listed 11 fake Facebook accounts that he said are using the PLP logo and sullying the party's reputation. Members of the Democratic National Alliance protested outside of Parliament yesterday, demanding Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis ring the bell for the next general election. As the House of Assembly met, protesters walked down West Bay Street towards Rawson Square, chanting, Minnis got to go, and holding placards that read, ring the bell, as bystanders looked on. At one point during the protest, there was a tense standoff between police and protesters, with officers seen pushing demonstrators and moving them away from the building. Protesters were instructed to leave the property and eventually joined the taxi cab union across the street, which also demonstrated yesterday morning. The director of the Pan American Health Organization said the group expects the world will continue to face a shortage of vaccines for much of 2021. Dr. Carissa F. Etienne and other PAHO officials spoke of the COVID-19 vaccine situation yesterday during a virtual press briefing. The director said some countries have already made the necessary preparations and PAHO is placing orders and readying several COVAX facilities in the region, with shipments likely to arrive mid-March. She said a total of 28.7 million doses will be delivered to countries in the Americas this period. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, President Joe Biden and Democrats in Congress are jamming their agenda forward with a sense of urgency, an unapologetically partisan approach based on the calculation that it's better to advance the giant COVID-19 rescue package and other priorities than waste time courting Republicans who may never compromise. The pandemic is driving the crush of legislative action, but so are the still raw emotions from the U.S. Capitol siege, as well as the hard lessons of the last time Democrats had the sweep of party control of Washington. Republicans are mounting blockades of Biden's agenda, just as they did during the devastating 2009 financial crisis with Barack Obama. The European Medicines Agency has started a rolling review of Russia's Sputnik V coronavirus vaccine many months after it was first approved for use in Russia and after dozens of countries around the world have authorized it. In a statement today, the European regulator said the review is based on results from lab studies and research in adults, which suggests the vaccine may help protect against the coronavirus. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A cold front in the vicinity of the central Bahamas will continue to move southeastwards with cooler temperatures in its wake. Boaters should remain alert for the risk of water spot activity, mainly in the vicinity of the frontal boundary. Beachgoers in the northwest Bahamas should exercise caution due to the risk of rip currents at north and east coast beaches. In the northwest Bahamas, it'll be variably cloudiness with the chance of a few isolated showers this afternoon, mostly fair and cool, with possible stray showers tonight. Winds northwest to north at 10 to 15 knots, but falling light and variable at times over open waters. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean in light north to northeasterly swells. In the central and southeast Bahamas, it'll be partly to mostly cloudy, with scattered showers and the chance of isolated thunderstorms, mainly in the vicinity of the frontal boundary through tonight. Small craft operators should be alert for gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers or thunderstorms. Winds west to northwest at 10 to 15 knots, but 
falling light and variable at times over open waters. Seas two to four feet over the ocean. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 79 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 66. The sun will set this afternoon at 612 and will rise tomorrow morning at 649. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper. Now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.